hello, 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 and welcome to Conservative Nation. I'm your gracious host, Jermaine Batio, on this beautiful Thursday evening. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I have a very special guest, Barry Nussbaum from American Truth Project. How you doing, sir? Great to be back with you, Jermaine. Absolutely, absolutely. Before we get begin here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that like button and make sure you guys go ahead and do us a favor and share. Because as you guys know, the Facebook algorithms and the YouTube algorithms are trying to shut us down. They don't want our uh, feed to be seen. And the one way for us to combat this, ladies and gentlemen, is for you guys to do us a solid and share, all right? Because sharing is caring around here. Don't treat us like some side chicks. Share. All right. So with that being said, Barry, 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 how you doing? I'm in the frozen tundra. It is cold. Um, yesterday we were supposed to do a show, but it was snowing so much I couldn't even get to the studio. That's why I couldn't wait to leave the Midwest, Jermaine. <laughs> I don't miss it even a little bit. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I bet um, you're having a good time in your weather. Yes, sir. Of course, of course. So, Barry, 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 why don't you go ahead and um, give my um, crowd a little bit of a synopsis, a summary of you, the American Truth Project, and what you guys do. Right, thanks. Um, as you know, Jermaine, American Truth Project is a nonprofit. We're educational only. We educate Americans on four topics exclusively, which is um, threats to America from uh, terrorism, specifically uh, terrorism related to Islamic terrorism. We talk about foreign terror in Europe as an example. Uh, we deal with the defense of the United States and, of course, uh, our strategic ally uh, Israel and how we can uh, enhance that relationship. And we also talk about Middle East policy in general uh, because it has a great deal of effect on the foreign policy of the United States. That's what we do, and that's what our shows are about, and that's what our content is about. So any of your viewers that want to get our regular stuff, they can just type in findberry.com. It'll take you to the website and sign up for free. We never charge for our content, and you get to see us every day. It'd be a nice enhancement from what you're doing, Jermaine, to give them some other insights. Absolutely, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you guys go ahead and check that out, all right, at the end here. So, Barry, a lot has been going on in the world here since the last time me and you uh, spoke here. And let me tell you, it's absolutely crazy. So we got <laughs> a lot of stuff to talk about in a little bit of time. So we're going to try to power our way through here. And um, our first um, agenda here um, is we're going to be speaking about Louis Farrakhan. Louis Farrakhan is in the news. Um, and let me tell you, it's nothing good. He's <laughs> And one thing else I could tell you here is that um, he gives Trump a very brazen and harsh warning about um, the things that are going on in the Middle East and if he decides to begin war with Iran. Now, I know that you are a Middle East expert. You're a good man. You know your stuff here. And I want to get your opinion on what is going on over there. And I want to get your opinion on Louis Farrakhan because Louis Farrakhan has been around politics for a very long time it seems like the liberal left has been cozying up to him him and uh people like uh keith ellison so i want to go ahead and run this clip here and when it comes back i want to get your take on it here on conservative nation all right here we go Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am begging our president and the government that supports him to be very, very careful because if the trigger of war 
in the Middle East is pulled by you using your surrogates at the insistence of Israel, then the war will trigger another kind of war which will bring China, Russia, all of the nations into a war. And it bothers me to say this to you, Mr. President, but the war will end America as you know it. Our affairs in the person. So when these Iranians chant death to America, death to Israel, no chant can bring about your death, but it is your policies that are eroding trust for you in the world favor for you in the world and now you're pulling apart confused and if you do this you will bring about not the Iranian chant you will bring about the death of the greatest nation process of being resurrected from a mental I know that chant came from the people of Iran. And this sanction is what's hurting the people of Iran. They have a right to chant it. But I am not a chanter. I am a worker for God. And the truth will undo falsehood. And the righteous will win against the wicked. Not with a chant. Uh, death to the United States uh, is not a slogan chanted by Government. In America, they said that they gave Iran billions of dollars, but they never said that they were holding over $150 billion of Iranian money and they were supposed to give it back during the treaty arrangement. But has Iran gotten that money back yet? What? Can anybody answer that question for me? No, with one another. I want to warn you. You speak as the foolish. America is mine. America is ours. Our sweat and our blood built America. How dare you say that we have no place there? How dare you say that we cannot criticize your evil and point it out to you? I am more of a patriot than most of you who bow down to evil and it is only truth that will make America better. And I speak that truth and I will be back in America to speak it again. All right, all right. So Barry, 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 there was a um, a long tirade there. And one thing I can tell you, <laughs> it got a lot of people mad. What do, what do you think about uh, what he said here? Louis Farrakhan has been the conductor of the crazy train, uh, at least the train in Chicago, Jermaine, for four decades. What I'm amazed about, truly amazed, that the world still gives him a platform. He is the most anti-American, anti-democratic, anti-white, mm -hmm. anti-Semitic American alive today. And yet, in spite of the hatred that he produces on a daily basis, the stage is always set with big names around it. I mean, think about this, Jermaine. Uh, a month ago, I guess, um, an American icon died, Aretha Franklin. Yep. The world watches the funeral. They put Farrakhan on the stage to grieve for her, along with Jesse Jackson and Bill Clinton like they're all friends. 
How that can even be possible in America today is astounding. The tape you just played, Farrakhan goes to Iran and threatens the destruction of the United States and the destruction of Israel like he's talking about lunch. Yeah. It's amazing that the condemnation of this person is not universal. And yet, the liberals in Congress embrace him as a great leader, as an inspiration, as a, as a help to the community. I don't know what community they're talking about because this is a guy promoting Sharia law yeah. over the American Constitution, which includes slavery is legal, Beating your wife to death is legal under certain circumstances. Execution for minor offenses is legal. Execution for not following the Quran once you're a Muslim is legal. It is insane that anybody would listen to him. And yet, here we are in front of a national audience, Jermaine, you and me, talking about the fact that Louis Farrakhan is in Iran with the leadership in Iran threatening the destruction of the United States and specifically Donald Trump. Oh my gosh, what a crazy world this is. You know, um, it, it's crazy to me that there are Christians in this uh, country who will still vote for the Democratic Party, especially when they cozy up to people like Louis Farrakhan, Keith Ellison, their rhetoric is so divisive. I mean, it blows my mind. These people are openly hating white Americans, Jews, and anybody who does not agree with their rhetoric. Uh, one thing I can tell you about uh, Louis Farrakhan, the NOI, they, they have a crazy uh, belief of how things happen here. I mean, very, very crazy. Um, you know, with a, you know, they believe white people were basically uh, made in a laboratory by, you know, and by a mad scientist. You know, um, I mean, it's absolutely crazy the stuff they believe, but yet they are able to garner a, a lot of money from um, a lot of left wing and also terrorist organizations. Nobody um, checks up on the money trail with these folks here, uh, especially um, here in Minnesota with Keith Ellison, because Keith Ellison, uh, they were funneling money through this daycare scheme as well, which ties into um, this whole uh, BS thing that Louis Farrakhan got going on. So um, to me, I believe that Louis Farrakhan should be condemned all the way around. And I wish that uh, the liberal left would see how dangerous this type of association is. I couldn't agree with you more. It's, look, just turn the media off. Stop publicizing anything he says. Yeah. Look, that crazy stuff that just came out of your mouth is true, Jermaine. They believe that white people were made by an evil mad scientist. I think uh, his name is Yakub yep, or something. Yakub. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, and white people are a science experiment gone bad. It's a lesser life form that eventually uh, the black race will subjugate the white race mm -hmm. and on and on and on. I mean, it is so goofy that it wouldn't even be a Saturday morning cartoon and yet it's a religion that has thousands and thousands of followers like Keith Ellison selling their newspaper on the corner. Uh, Farrakhan plays that video all the time about Brother Farrakhan. And you have like this woman's march led by a couple of people like Tamika Mallory who think Louis Farrakhan is a great man, yeah. is a leader to be emulated. and. You've got members of the American Congress, specifically in the Black Caucus, who are proud to sit down with him at picture opportunities and photo ops. And the President of the United States for eight years considered Louis Farrakhan his friend, yeah. Barack Obama. They buried the picture while he was running for office, but the photographer let the picture out. Uh, what, last year, I believe, saying, hey, I've been sitting on this picture. I thought it was time it came out. Uh, they were friends from Chicago. Oh, my gosh. Spewing hatred that is so anti-American, it's 
stunning yeah. that any American citizen would tolerate it, let alone anyone that believed in Christianity, Judaism, equal rights, women's rights, child rights, because all those things, according to the religion of the nation of Islam, are not the way we think. It's a different way that nobody would voluntarily sign up for. It's like signing up to go into a prison camp and you're the prisoner, not the jailer. Absolutely. And one thing I can uh, tell you about Louis Farrakhan, too, is that he impacts the black community a lot here in the U.S. Um, young black Americans look up to him because of his rhetoric. Um, he has a pro-black rhetoric. And this pro-black rhetoric I've been saying on this uh, program is very, very damaging, and it leads to destruction. Um, it's all about hating the white man. It's all about um, eradicating uh, Christianity and getting rid of, quote-unquote, Western culture. It's all about um, hate, in a sense, of uh, not being truthful with uh, yourself and the people around you because um, what he preaches is something that I believe everybody should be against.